Hi. So, I've always felt at home in the woods. I don't know why. It's always been a wood near me where I lived, except for the short period of my life when I lived in the city. So today I'm out walking again, as I do every day. And I came to think of this idea of the woods being a place to hide and my need to hide on a regular basis. I need to hide from the world or from other people or maybe even from myself. I've always felt small in comparison to nature. Nature has always had a tendency to overwhelm me and I think I'm easily overwhelmed by people as well and dealing with the the sense of being constantly overwhelmed is uh, an issue, it can be a problem. But the difference between <laughs> the difference between being overwhelmed by human stuff and being overwhelmed by nature and the vastness of it all is that nature is like it doesn't impose. People can do like intrusive things without even realizing it, just by being human, you know? And nature doesn't do that. Nature just stays and watches you in all its grandness. And that's why I think I've always felt very... The woods has always been this refuge for me and continues to be to this day. Nature is both terrifying and exhilarating. Uh, and by nature, I don't mean just forests. I mean like the universe itself is such a inspiring and breathtaking place to even think about. When I look at the sky at night and I see the stars, it takes my breath away. And sometimes it's scary, but it doesn't impose, you know, like a scary imposing pe person would do. It's just there, you know, and it's a part of me. And at the same time, it's so much bigger than me. So I like the idea. Okay, so now it becomes very fluffy. Uh, okay, so I like the idea of building my own inner sanctum, my own inner hut. And in a way, the woods in this case will be a symbol of that. I have always been interested in building safe spaces inside me, safe spaces in which I can rest, recharge, protect myself. And in a way, when I move through the forest, I create my own little inner forest as well, my inner sanctum. Maybe this doesn't make sense at all. And if it doesn't, I'm sorry. I don't really have a plan as usual when I make these videos. I don't really know what I'm going to talk about. It's the same with my podcast, really. Fall asleep with Henrik. I don't prepare. For example, I don't know where to go. Maybe I should go in here. No, I'm gonna go in here. Being in the woods forces me into introspection and introspection in turn forces me to build places in my mind where good things happen. And I think we all need inner sanctuaries because the world can be a rough place and we need, I think we all need, some sort of own space where we are completely out of harm's way. I think that we we deserve that and I think that we really our lives become so much easier if we have a place a space where we where we are safe really. Right now I I feel I'm so much better equipped or maybe in a few hours, I don't know. In a few hours after I've been walking around here for a while, building my inner hut, I will be so much more equipped to deal with stress and anxiety and feelings of unfulfillment or fear. So, okay, I'm gonna sit down and I'm gonna try to make this, build my inner hut right now. Okay, so you get to be a part of it. And maybe you can do the same. Maybe you can tell me in the comments how you build your own inner huts. Maybe together we can build like a little village of inner huts where we can have like neighborly feeling of being in the neighborhood together but still having our own very private, very safe spaces. So for me, 
my inner hut is? Well, in many of my fantasies, in my imagination, my inner hut is a spaceship. But it's not like this uh, Star Trek vessel. It's not like something out of Star Wars and or any other science fiction popular culture thing. It's more of a bubble. It's more of a teardrop, but lying down like like uh, this shape, like a lion, like a lion teardrop, and it's transparent if I wanted to. That is, you can't look in unless I explicitly make it so, but I can look out almost every time. I can also make it not transparent so that I get protection from the outside world, also visually. But this spaceship is not only a, a ship able to travel through space, it's also a vessel that can transport me through time and matter so that I, if I want to go to the center of the world, the center of Earth, I can, I can do that. I can d just travel, dematerialize and travel through Earth and rock and molten lava down to the very core and I can be there and I can be totally protected and I can be totally safe inside this space. And it's very cozy. It's uh, like this living room, really. And of course, I have a coffee maker and I have a fridge. We, and the fridge is like filled with stuff that I like. There's a lot of chocolate and cheese and coffee and bread. And um, I can live there for as long as I want. And I'm totally safe. And I'm also, if I want to, totally invisible. You can't see me in my ship, in my inner hut. But for the sake of this analogy, let's keep it to a hut. Let's park my spaceship. So just because of, just because, just to make this analogy work, let's make this about a hut. Something that stands on the ground still. So I, I still would furnish my inner hut with really comfortable furniture, like a, a wonderful chair where I can lean back, maybe adjust the, the back so that I can lean in any angle I want. The smell is like this mixture between coffee and buns and rain. And I can also change the smell whenever I want. It's an ever-changing place, although it's the same. So I have total control of it. I can change the furniture and the, the tapestry and, and the, the art on the, on the windows and the transparency of the whole vessel, the whole hut. I can change it into anything I want because it's my space. And if I don't want to be seen, no one can see me. And if I want to be seen, then there's no doubt I can make myself visible to the entire world through my inner heart if I want to. But it's also, mainly, it's a private space. I very seldom invite anyone in. If I invite someone in, it's like, it's a huge thing, you know. And it's a great, it's a great thing to be able to give that to someone and to share your inner heart with someone. And... I'm usually a very shareable person. I share a lot of my thoughts and my feelings, but I very seldom let someone into my inner hut. So whenever I feel stressed or attacked or troubled in any other way, I enter my inner hut. And it's in this village with all the other inner huts, your inner huts as well. Right now we're a village and we're together here. And we can wave at each other through the windows if you want to, but no one is bothering anyone else. We can just... But we know that if we were to be threatened in any way, we could join our inner huts together into this vast network of inner huts and we can, we can make resistance, we can, we can fight. And it's not fighting in any conventional sense, it's fighting like real fighting like the fight for one's own dignity and the right to be yourself and to think and feel what you want. And to me, this spending time in nature reinforces my routine into keeping my inner hut clean and available 24-7. And I think it is the vastness, but still 
the lack of intrusiveness of nature that makes it possible for me to keep my inner hut intact. There are so many distractions in the world, in life, and I don't want to fall into the trap saying like the world is a much more distracting place now than probably like in ancient times because I don't know that. It's very easy to say that. It's very easy to demoralize stuff, to say that it was everything was better in the past. And I don't I don't belong to the people that claims that stuff was better overall in the past. Of course there was a lot of stuff being better in the past, but there was also a hell of a lot of stuff that was bad, real bad in the past. But the truth is that it's a very distracting time, I guess. I have my phone here. It just right now it told me that I uh, left my iPad behind. I don't care. I don't want to bring my iPad out here, but it tells me in case I would you forget it on a train station or something. But it's a stupid thing and it just distracts me. Leave the phone at home, Henrik. Yeah, but I have a child and I want to be able to be reached. So, you know, you take the good with the bad, this modern technology and distractions. It's also a way for me to connect with you guys. Without my inner hut, I would be a hollow person. I would be owned by my fear and my anxiety and my stress and my worry and my frustration. Without my inner hut, I would be a mess. I would be awful to live with. And I wouldn't be able to talk to you like this. I wouldn't be able to talk to myself. I wouldn't be able to dream and make up worlds and plans. I owe my life to my inner hut. Without my inner hut, I would be dead, I think. It saved me from time to time in dark times in my life, during bullying in middle and high school, during my drinking years. During breakups and during depression, I wouldn't have a life if it weren't for my inner hut. That's the honest truth. So how do you guys visualize your inner hut? If you catch my analogy now, it's uh, I would really like to know how other people view their own inner sanctums. You don't have to refer to it as an inner hut, but just for the sake of it, I do it right now. As I mentioned earlier, my inner hut is really a, some sort of an omnipotent vessel. Can I use that word? Om omnipotent vessel. I don't know if that's the right word. When it's... Okay, so write in the comments below if you want to. Tell me, how does your inner sanctum work? What does it look like if I were to enter your hut? Not that I wouldn't, I, I couldn't, you know. The only way to enter someone's inner hut is to be invited. Isn't that a great thing? No one can ever break into that place. Isn't that a kind of left out detail in the teachings about the universe? That your own inner hut is, un it's, in it's impossible to break into it unless you invite someone. And what a beautiful thing it is that we are able to, if we want to, invite, invite. <laughs> If we want to invite someone else into that inner sanctum, into that inner hut. I'm going to leave you to it right now. Right now, I'm going to leave you to it. Think about what I've said. No, you, I don't care. It's, life is like a mess. You may be watching this on your way to work or just before you're going to sleep. And I can't control that. This is just me having nothing to do at the moment but telling you about me. And... Get, giving you a glimpse of what my inner heart looks like. Bye.